there is a reason a perfectly good reason and a very long story time for why I am now coming to you with snow outside at a Holiday Inn in Flagstaff, Arizona. But I will tell you this, there is a Denny's there and that's gonna make all the difference. Stay tuned for uh, getting locked out of the Grand Canyon last night. Okay, okay. There's our Holiday Inn Express that saved us. And it is still snowing out here. It's gonna snow a little bit this morning, a little bit tonight. <laughs> Did you like your pancakes? Was that, was that a fun baby slam? And Tobin's ready. He's like, I brought my lumberjack gear to Arizona, so I'm set. Oh no, dancing in your eggs. <laughs> okay friends, so story time. I wanted to do this while the story's less than 24 hours old. <laughs> so I hopefully don't forget too many details and can pull it all together well for you. As you all know now, just cause I shared some on Instagram and uh, of course there was the other video already that I was coming out to Utah for a business trip in the Na Zion National Park area. I came out a little early so that I could take Naomi to Zion National Park. And also I added on some time onto the end so I could take her to a really fun place called the Grand Canyon. I've been before, she hasn't been. And I just thought since we were out here, you know, still gonna be a couple hours away. Tobin, what you think? You gonna be okay? He's in the hotel crib with some apple juice. Okay, may have to go get my baby and come back for the story time. You okay now? Now you standing? On this trip, he has learned to pull himself up in the crib. And I mean, it's the beginning of walking around things. You're just 10 months old and ready, huh? So I had a uh, real good intentions, happy plan of adding on the fun Grand Canyon adventure to the end of the trip. Now the plan was my meetings were supposed to end about five and I thought we'd leave about four. It's still like four and a half hours to the Grand Canyon. I was leaving my meetings just a little early. Um, we would spend Friday night at our hotel in Grand Canyon Village so that Saturday today we would wake up right at the rim of the Grand Canyon, like in there, doing it. We'd have all day Saturday. We had our meal reservations and we were there. Okay. We weren't doing obviously any hiking or mule rides or anything uh, along those lines. My mom, of course, has done the mule ride to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and has stayed at the Phantom Ranch and has done those exciting grandmother adventures, have another family member who has hiked it. We were just going to see it and to look down at it and to eat at the restaurants, have a nice full day. We were gonna spend our second night at the Grand Canyon. I'm watching you, Tobin. Wake up there again Sunday morning, and then Sunday I was thinking we'd leave about eight or so, drive our four and a half hours back to St. George, Utah, fly out of there, head home. Cause our, our flight, I set it up, it doesn't leave until three. And we could have flown out of Arizona, closer to the Grand Canyon and but just because I hadn't done that before, I, you know, you know what you know, I thought that's okay, I'll just drive back. We'll have all day. And I thought on our drive back, since we were coming here in the dark, there's a ton to see if you're driving from the Grand Canyon back towards Utah, back towards St. George and all that. So we'd be able to stop and see. I think there's a Marble Canyon. There's a whole list of beautiful things to stop and see. So that was also my rationale for just going back the way we came, seeing it in the daylight, maybe stopping here and there, having a real nice time going home. Okay. So also, Right, Tobin? Yes, also. He can stand back up. Also, I know that it can snow at the Grand Canyon, right? We know this. I have driven in snow. I'm from Virginia. We have snow. Also, working as a nurse, I would have lots of times I'd have to drive in the snow and may not even have a four-wheel drive. So, the snow that can happen out here or Utah didn't bother me at all. I just wanted to be really prepared. So, we were sure to rent a rental car that was four-wheel drive and then somehow how they upgraded us to another four-wheel drive and whatever we have a four-wheel drive so I figured 
you know, farm girl, snow girl. I just know if you have a four wheel drive, you can handle a lot of different weather and road situations. So look, I was prepared. We had that. And I've been watching the weather at the Grand Canyon uh, for over a month now. And this week it was in like the 40s and the 50s. No big deal. I did notice a few nights ago around 10 p.m. on the weather app, there was like one little snowflake at the Grand Canyon. It talked about flurries and some snow uh, would start around 10, then it would dissipate, then it was gonna start again Saturday morning for maybe an hour or two, and then there was no more snow for the weekend. And I thought, well, that's fine. If we just get in there, you know, before, any dusting or even up to, you know, an inch of snow. If we just get in there before, sorry to check on my baby, then uh, that'll be fine. And if it snows some Saturday morning, that'll be beautiful. And we're not leaving until Sunday. They should have the roads clear and all that. No big deal, still on. All things as planned. Had to bring my baby back over here. And yes, I have the trash can sitting up on the desk because, uh, you know, tra traveling with, with busy, busy boys, right? So, left my meetings an hour early. We were pretty much done. It was just more hanging out with the other people who were there, chatting it up some more. Several of the people were staying Friday night and they were gonna leave Saturday. But I was trying to get my girl to the Grand Canyon and, and have some, some fun time on the end of this trip as well. So we leave, but I had some confusion on the way out because I could tell by my GPS there was one way I could have gone that was gonna take us back through Zion National Park. Lots of those zigzaggy, curvy roads that I showed you on my unexpected hike adventure in my last video. It was just gonna take us through a lot of roads like that. And I thought, you know what, wanna be safe. I know that weather conditions can change quickly. I wanna go the way where I go from Zion National Park back to Hurricane Utah. And then it was a longer way, maybe, how much longer was it? I don't know. 25, 30 minutes more, a little bit longer way. It looked like it had straighter roads and would just, would get us there, which is the same, but I felt a little more sure. More main roads, not back mountain roads, okay. So, driving through Arizona, there were, there was several times where flurries started and flurries went away. That's fine. Uh, then, and I imagine we were up on some mountains because the way that this road took us also took us by the North Rim, which is of course closed this time of year. And there were lots of signs well in advance that the North Rim is closed this time of year. We weren't stopping at the North Rim. We were just taking that road passing by. Well, that's a higher elevation. And when we were up there, we did have steady snow for quite a while. I did not have to put the vehicle in four wheel drive. I just kept on moving forward. It did take from our time though. So anyway, eventually just kept on moving, got out of that. And we got into some more areas with no snow. And we came to the town is called, I believe you say it's Cameron, Arizona. And we would make a right hand turn and there were signs there that said Grand Canyon Village. Woo, good job, good catch Tobin. And it was like 60 some miles I think. and. Those who live there and know this exactly, you know, of course my mile markers and stuff might be slightly off. Just a long way potentially depending on the weather. So by that point, we had already driven several hours and so 60 miles left. There was no snow happening. There was no flurries. It was about 8.30 or so. Uh, I think we were doing pretty well. And let me thinking through my times, I think I'm pretty right on my time. So we turn right, uh, we get going down that road, and I wanna say, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in, going down that road a little bit, and flurry started. Again, flurry's okay. We don't mind the flurries. Kept pushing forward. Got to be heavier snow, heavier uh, along the lines of what I was driving through come in from Utah into Northern Arizona. Again, it was fine, no four wheel drive needed. And then uh, it continued to increase. It seemed like there was probably at least an inch of snow on the ground. And so by that point, I thought, you know, there is the option of turning around and going back, but it didn't. that didn't make sense to me at that moment because what was I gonna turn around and go back to? You know, the, the uh, Zion National Park that we had stayed at, 
was almost four and a half hours away going the other direction and we had already come through snow going that way uh the town of cameron i didn't see much going on there and so my rationale at that time was jay morrell you've been driving through snow that's why you got this four-wheel drive you're you know subtracted down the miles to uh the grand canyon village entrance just keep going forward and and i did okay i wasn't being double-minded and i was not seriously considering turning around but as you hear this story i figure that question will come up so i'm just letting you know that when even when there was an inch of snow on the ground i was closer to the entrance of the grand canyon village that i had been then i was turning around and going back to cameron and i was also driving in someone else's tracks and the other way was completely covered with no tracks still would have been fine but just saying like i didn't want to turn around and go back to something i didn't know we had hotel reservations down the road right so we just kept moving forward. Now at some point, uh, I don't know what it was exactly, it just seemed like the car very well could be struggling a little bit, and so it was very nice, my Chevy Blazer review. I just turned a little knob, so easy. It was in four wheel drive. I was only able to go about 10 to 15 miles an hour by this point, but again, we're moving towards a goal. Um, at some point, we are on the East Rim Drive, and we had passed the signs and that said Grand Canyon National Park. We were not yet to the booth where you pay the $35, but like we were in there. We were up in there. <laughs> we were seeing elevation signs like elevation 6,000 feet, you know, yada, yada. Um, we couldn't see a thing though because of the snow. So I'd like to look up that road and like see what we were really driving on because at some parts like I just didn't see nothing. So, where <laughs> uh, there were no guardrails, you know, just just looked looked like it could have been interesting, but we were blinded by the snow. So, of course, I am uh, thinking all my mom thoughts of, okay, now you know you got to keep the car moving forward. We don't want to stop the car. Of course, I thought, you know, no way we're going to get stuck because, again, the goal was I'm in four wheel drive. I'm driving through the snow. I am following the signs to the Grand Canyon Village. Now we're in the Grand Canyon Park piece. Um, still several miles to go. We finally see the entrance where you pay, and it has green lights <coughs> on. And bless you, Tobin, has green lights on. I pull up, there's no one there. By this point, I should probably mention, it's about, um, let's see. It was, it had to have been a little bit after 10 because by this point, my GPS was saying we would be to the hotel about 10 with our extra time driving through other snow. So I do stop the car because I, I, I looked at the side to pay the $35 and the snow was coming down hard. And I thought, one thought was, okay, I'm not going to stop right now. Um, I could just, I'll let them know at the hotel, I'll call down and pay, or I'll come down and pay in the morning, I shouldn't stop, and then I thought, oh, it's just, just stop real quick, it's no big deal, it's the right thing to do, do that, and so, stopped the car, got my bank card out, got out in the 27 degrees, whatever it was at that time, anyway, the machine froze up, it was not processing my bank card, and... Yeah, I tried it a couple times and it was freezing and it was snowing. And so I looked at the cameras there and I told them my name. I told them the hotel I was staying at, how the machine was freezing up and not processing my bank cards, but that I would call and pay it in the morning. No big deal. Go in. Okay, again, green lights. Drive through, follow with the GPS. Um, takes us right to the road where you enter grand canyon village it says grand canyon village 24 miles big closed gates with chains so there's that okay so then i call our hotel and i say um i have driven a very long time in this snow with kids and we are here and our reservation is with you and you're on the other side of this gate. 
I was just super frustrated to be have gotten that far and not be able to get in. And I know the night desk clerk at our hotel couldn't help us. And I was just like, can you, can you call a park ranger? I didn't know. I was just thinking, since we work so hard, maybe someone would come out and let us follow them in. Doesn't hurt to ask, but that apparently wasn't an option. And things were getting confusing as I was sitting there and waited for him to talk to the manager and I'm trying to get my GPS to work to find other routes and it wasn't working. And Tobin is crying and we're just sitting by this locked gate. So the hotel guy comes back on and he's like, well, I sure hope you can make it out of here. Pretty much uh, what you're gonna have to do is turn around and go back the way that you came. And at about 27 miles, there will be another turn on your right. And you take that and that will take you to the other South Rim entrance that is still open. And I did have a lot of thoughts at that point of, uh, of getting stuck and we didn't didn't want to get stuck didn't think we could get stuck but just you know we'd already come that far who knows how things were gonna go so we just turn around and we start driving back the 60 miles that we came 10 to 10 miles per hour for a long time eventually we worked up to 15 there were a couple other cars that we could tell had did the same thing we did and uh uh, yeah, so then we drove all the way back to Cameron. Um, at one point also, the car I was driving started shaking and I was like, oh, you know, I don't need uh, a, a tire going out or anything like that. So I realized at that time it was probably the four wheel drive. So I had taken it out of four wheel drive, still was shaking. We still got to Cameron because Mama wasn't stopping by that point. At Cameron, I got out and looked at it. it. had a bunch of snow like wedged, packed hard. So I got that out. There were no bathrooms open and no hotels. Got on the, and by this point, it's like midnight or so. Yeah, so I was thankful to get us back out of there. I was sad we didn't get to go in. I looked for hotels and the closest hotels were in Flagstaff, another 60 miles away. Again, we couldn't go back the way we came. So we made it to Flagstaff about 2.30. We found there's a Holiday Inn and there's a Denny's right here. And we were super thankful to uh, number one, because sometimes you can't just walk into a hotel these days and like have a room. So what I ended up doing was when I came in at 2.30 this morning, I paid for two nights, you know, last night that we were already in the middle of and tonight, because I knew there was some snow forecasted for this morning. And uh, I knew we were tired, even if we were gonna go somewhere, I just knew like, I don't know. We were, we were gonna sleep a while. I just didn't want the pressure. And I thought very realistically we might have to spend two nights here in Flagstaff. So when we woke up this morning, I think we went to bed about four. I don't know. I think we were up at like 6.30 or 7. I don't think we slept that much. But we were so crazy exhausted. It's like any little bit of sleep you feel like you can live. It was snowing hard here. I did start to feel like, oh, maybe still there's some way to get to that south rim entrance but i knew i had to talk myself out of it though but it was like girl you are too crazy exhausted to be driving around in this snow trying to find some entrance and i thought who knows i might get that far and they close the road and, and i have no idea because that's what happened last night i called around to tour bus companies i thought okay well i mean tourist area maybe there's tour bus companies that take people from flagstaff to the grand canyon and there are however the only one that had seats available on the bus that left at 1230 did not have a pickup time. So they would have dropped us in, but they could not have picked us up until tomorrow. And our stuff and rental car would be here. I mean, just too much to coordinate, to pack up and get in there. Plus this morning, one of the first things I did was call the hotel to, uh, or actually I think I did, I did that. That's what I did whenever we got in this hotel room last night. I, uh, through my booking, I was chatting with someone early this morning, telling them what happened. And the hotel had told me, because I booked through Expedia, the hotel had told me if, uh, if basically, if Expedia called them or the third party booking, that they would refund me all the money 
that uh, I had already paid or reserved or whatever for the hotel uh, because the gate was locked. We couldn't get in the road and we were past the cancellation time. So I made sure to do this this morning as the principal of the thing. Like the gate was closed. We could not even get in. I'm not giving you my, I think it was like $527 for two nights. Like, no, thank you. So I just decided, okay, too much of an adventure. We have to rest and recuperate from all of that today. We went to this Denny's this morning for breakfast and it was packed, but uh, fantastic food. We were, we were so thankful. And so that's just what we are resting in this hotel. We're trying not to nap because if we could get up at 4 a.m. Arizona time tomorrow morning and kind of like pull things together, maybe leave by five-ish, um, 4 a.m. Arizona time is 6 a.m. at home, and that's just gonna help us transition back to East Coast time. So my plan is now, uh, number one, I don't wanna go back any of these ways that I came because we have a flight to catch, and Flagstaff is actually down below the Grand Canyon now, so from here, with just a little bit more time, we could go from here and go by the Hoover Dam, drive through Las Vegas, want to see if we can see where they have the show, The Pond Stars. We've always loved that show. And then drive up to St. George. So instead of four and a half hours, it's supposed to take us five hours and 15 minutes. Our flight is not until three. And I figured if we leave nice and early, we'll be, have time to do some things like stop at the Hoover Dam and wave to the Pond Stars sh shop and those kind of fun things. So that's, that's how we're compensating and how we're, uh, trying to get this this show on the road and futuristically maybe there's an rv trip in our future and we can all come out west and do some sightseeing together i would love to take everybody of course to the grand canyon and through the utah all so much in utah to see and then um, to yosemite and those kind of fun things so anyway i think now we're ready for lunch so you want to go have Denny's make lunch for us tobin maybe Okay, yeah, so I think we're gonna go over to Denny's and have lunch, and then again, I'm gonna try to come back. There's some writing I need to do, and I'm really inspired from this trip I just had, so I think, fingers crossed, I'll be able to come back and get some of that done while all my ideas are fresh, and uh, rest my body for our adventures tomorrow. Good morning, it is our heading out day. You see, Mr. Tobin is still sleeping. Gonna let him sleep as long as he can. It's about, oh, my watch it and focus in, but it's about 6.15 or so. Hoping to, to leave Flagstead, Arizona by seven at this point and uh, go from there, yay. Thanks for watching. You hear Tobin? He's in uh, the hotel crib that they provided, a dad, dad, yes. We'll see you real soon with another brand new video, yay.